Hi guys, how are you doing? So tonight we're here for the very last event of uh, traffic automation and uh, me and uh, uh, we have a special guest tonight and uh, I thank you for joining all the three events. It has been a pleasure. And uh, let me welcome for tonight, Brian Christner. We are very happy to have you here. Brian is coming from Arizona, but now I think he's living in Switzerland. So it's not very far from our us usual place in Torino, but it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to have him here. He will talk us about uh, uh, observability and metrics in traffic and uh, it will give you a nice overview and uh, it will give us some tips about courses at the end. So I'm very happy to have him here. I welcome him and I leave you the stage and uh, guys stay traffic. Okay, <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. It's all yours. They're all Thank yours, you, Sergio. Well, I, I, uh, I guess observability, we can start with one question is, does pineapple, should we observe pineapples on top of pizza or? <laughs> exactly, exactly, that's a nice joke. But pay attention because the, I think the majority of, the, of our uh, pe of people watching is from Italy. So you're walking on a hard terrain, okay? <laughs> also, let me make sure I'm sharing the right screen here. And all right. And we go screen two and share. Good. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You can go home. Do you All see right. my presentation? Yes, it works very nice. Perfect. All right, let's get started. And we're going to discuss a little bit about traffic first in case you don't know about traffic. So I'm going to explain traffic and the journey we can do with traffic. And we'll just go through this step by step. And the agenda for this particular event, we're going to do introductions. Obviously, I would like to do this in person next time. So I'd like to come visit you in Turin, Torino so we can see this in person and have you know some pizza and coffee in person. So next time, I'll do it in person. Um, introductions, you know, myself, about the company I work for, and also about traffic. We'll do a traffic overview. Exactly what is traffic? what is the company behind it, and a little bit about the products they offer. Next up, we'll go into observability. We'll understand exactly what is observability from a SRE perspective, so a site reliability engineering perspective. You know, We're going to look at exactly what signals we want to measure with observability. And finally, we'll get into traffic on exactly how we can enable these metrics within traffic and stand up a complete monitoring stack with a demo. So we'll do that in this particular meetup. What do you think? All it's right. Idea. <laughs> so about me, my name is Brian Christner. I am the founder of uh, The Byte, which is a training platform. And I have two courses on there already, and I can kind of show you a bit later on. And I'm also the co-founder of 56k.cloud. 56k.cloud is a DevOps consultancy based in Switzerland, but we've been remote before remote was cool now. You know, everybody's doing it. But we've been remote since day one. So we've started about three years ago, and we focus on you know, developer experience, really bringing you know, the experience developers have to the cloud, to their environments. So that's what we're focusing on. My background is in engineering and cloud architecture. So I started my career in casinos, and I really built up large infrastructures in casinos before it was called cloud, and we built on top of that. Additionally, I'm an open source contributor. I contributed very early on to Docker, you know, back in before it was even version one, I was contributing to the project and that allowed me to become the Docker captain. I'm also, John Luke is a Docker captain as well. So we're part of the Docker captain uh, program. Additionally, I'm a traffic ambassador. So that means basically I get paid in stickers and t-shirts so I can hand it out to people. And finally, I'm a mountain biker. I'm really passionate about mountain biking. So I like that as well. All right, some traffic statistics. What is traffic and what is some of the, why are people using traffic? And I think, you know, statistics are great because, you know, it really shows you an unbiased view of something. So let's just look at the statistics first. 
First up, 2 billion, doc, 2 billion downloads of Docker Hub. If you go to Docker Hub, hub.docker.com, you can see the top or most popular images out there, and traffic is listed as one of the most popular images on Docker Hub. Very impressive, considering that it, there's you know thousands of images out there. It also has 30,000 stars in GitHub, so it has quite a large community behind it, 500 contributors. And as I mentioned, it's one of the most popular images out there. So when you pick a technology, it's great to know that you're not the only one using it, right? Because you, you want to make sure that you know, you're not alone in this journey. So that's why I want to really highlight that this is an established platform. There's many people behind it and a great community as well. All right, traffic use cases. First up is it's a reverse proxy. Okay. And, you know, Emil, which is the founder of Traffic, you know, they asked him, are you just making another reverse proxy? Aren't there enough out there? And actually he said, you know, there are reverse proxies out there, but, you know, they don't do the job of a microservice reverse proxy because you always have to configure it. You have to do these things. So he thought, you know, make a reverse proxy that does automatic discovery of your workload. So anytime a container starts, Traffic notices it and registers it and, is able to expose it, which is really great. The next thing it's uh, use case is an API gateway. So you can use it as API gateway, load balancing, certificate management, Kubernetes ingress. And actually there's a lot of more use cases, but these are the main ones. All right, traffic uh, proxy is not just traffic. There's other products in the traffic portfolio. And actually they went through rebranding. So I, I, I failed this and I didn't put the right logos in there. But you can see there's Traffic Enterprise, that's the enterprise version, the community version, which we're gonna talk about today. Then there's Service Mesh and there's Traffic Pilot. Traffic Pilot is like a SaaS platform that allows you to connect it to traffic and it gives you like security updates. It tells you, you can add new middlewares. It just extends traffic a bit more. It's free, so give it a try if you haven't used it yet. All right, let's get into observability and traffic generally. All right, observability overview, there's, you know, if we look at it, what are we gonna cover with traffic? And there's, you know, four different components within traffic we can really observe. And that's traffic logs themselves. So what's traffic actually monitoring? Then there's access logs. So who or what service is asking for what other service? And that's really like your, your web logs that you're used to in Nginx or Apache or HTTP. So this is really, you know, what IP address, what, resources requesting, and you get all this information for every service that connects to traffic. Next up is metrics and monitoring. So we can actually enable metrics on traffic for any service that's connecting. So we can see the latency between traffic and the backend service. And this is very helpful because you can really do a lot of troubleshooting this way. And finally, there's tracing. We can actually enable tracing on traffic which allows us to trace the package or the packet directly from traffic all the way to your workload. For So again, for troubleshooting, it adds a lot of value there. All right, since we're talking about observability, we need to talk about Google and how they do site reliability engineering. And if uh, you've been watching Twitter or Google last week, you know, Google actually, you know, had some issues, right? They, they had some downtime. They actually ran out of disk space. So you think even Google has disk space issues, right? So this, they wrote a book about it. They wrote, how do you do site rel uh, reliability engineering? And this free book right here, landing.google.com forward slash ashery book, or I think it's even google.com forward slash ashery, um, brings you to this book. And it explains how you know, Google runs production systems and how they treat operations as software which is really kind of interesting. Now, this particular case, it won't apply for everyone, but it's a good concept in how they, how Google does it, and maybe take you know little bits and pieces from it and how you can apply it for yourself. John Luca has a lot of information behind this because he, him and I had discussed this in detail before. So this is a great uh, starting point. Just check out this book. It tells you, you know, how you write postmortems. How do you look at uh, what signals are you looking for? So there's a lot of good information in this book. One great quote from this book is hope is not a strategy, <laughs> you know? So we really need to plan things. We need to have some things in place and, you know, hope, you know, I hope it works. That shouldn't be said. We should test it and know and have metrics that tells us it works. That's really what we're trying to achieve. Valid monitoring outputs are alerts, tickets, and logging. 
Okay, so alerts tells a human to take an action, all right? That means, you know, I get alert, the data center is on fire. That's the alert, okay? That's the type of alert. I don't care if the CPU is running 10%. I don't care, you know, if my disk is gonna fill up in 10 days because that's like something I can uh, plan for. An alert is like something is broken now and it's affecting users. That's an alert. Now, next up is tickets. Tickets is where, okay, you're gonna run out of disk space in 10 days. That would be generated as a ticket and tell you, okay, you need to take action on this before it becomes an alert. And finally, logging. Logging is really for diagnostics and forensics. And we can really look at, you know, what happens something after the fact. So those are the three main monitoring outputs we're gonna look at. And when we talk about SRE, we also have operating model, uh, operational models. We have manual, reactive, and proactive. Now manual, you know, you have some checklists, you have some scripts, you know, you know how it is. You, you've seen these before, I'm sure, out in the field is where everything is manual and it's very cumbersome and it has a lot of user error possibility there. Now, reactive is where you have some manual scripts, some automated scripts, uh, some monitoring collection. So it's a mix and match of reactive and manual. Then proactive is honestly where we would aim for. That would be great if you know you have end-to-end -end observability, you have all the metrics enabled on everything. Obviously, not every organization is that level. So what we're shooting for is something between reactive and proactive. If we can have some things uh, enabled for metrics and you know some reactive type of tools, that's where we should aim for in a real operating model in your environment. Now, users, we love users, right? Everybody loves users because you know they're <laughs> end of the day, they're paying our bills. So we, we need to take care of our users. And the first thing users ask for is availability. Is my system online? Is my system online? They don't care about you know, your colleague over here to the left or to the right or the one working remotely. They care about you know, what's right in front of me. Can I access my email, right? Yes or no. Now, the next thing is latency, okay? If I log into my email and it takes a long time, you know, I'm gonna complain, man, this is slow and this is this. So that's latency. Latency is very keen because we measure latency on how things happen. And the last point users care about is reliability. When something is offline, then you know it's it's a drastic measure because we can't access it, we can't do our job. And at all costs, we need to protect reliability because if we lose trust with our users, they won't come back to use it or they'll choose to find a different way. Because you know, our users are much like water, they'll find the easiest path to do something. So we need to make sure it's reliable, low latency, and it's available. If we can handle these three things, our users will be happy. All right, now we're gonna jump into metrics. We know a little bit about the operating models, you know, how SRE works. Let's get into the metrics of this. So traffic supports four different backends currently, and metrics backends, I must say. And that's Datadog, InfluxDB, Prometheus, and StatsD. In, in the, the presentation, I'm going to discuss Prometheus because that's uh, you know, how I built the demos, and it's very easy to use. Datadog is an enterprise software. It's also very good. InfluxDB is another open source tool. They're all great stuff. But I'm going to focus on Prometheus because that's you know, it's a CNCF meetup. You know, it's a CNCF tool. We've got to use our CNCF stuff. All right, what are we going to build here? So we have a Prometheus monitoring stack. On the left-hand side, I'm using Docker Swarm just for oops, just for sake of easiness, right? Because it's super easy. I can run on my laptop without it screaming at me, you know, from CPU and whatnot. So I have a Docker Swarm, and then I'm deploying a Prometheus server or a container, a Grafana container, and then that's my monitoring stack. I can deploy this in one command, and I can have everything up and running. Now, what would that look like if I introduce traffic? Now, traffic, if I add traffic to it, you can see here's traffic in the middle. And now I have a dashboard. And now I can actually give uh, host names to each service. So Grafana Prometheus, you see here. I can actually name it Grafana.localhost, Prometheus.localhost. So I start giving host names to things and start making it like a real test environment locally. And then I can map Prometheus.localhost to the actual service in the backend. And I can start routing things. I can start adding more services and middlewares. 
So it really allows you to add a lot of features into your stack. And now how do I enable metrics within traffic? Well, I'm glad you asked because in the traffic configuration file, the traffic YAML, you can see there's providers, Docker, exposed by default, log level. We, we can adjust the log level here, but it's a standard YAML file that we all love YAML, right? And you can see we have metrics, Prometheus buckets. That's it. You just put those three lines in and it's already enabled. Now these are the standard buckets for time series in Prometheus. So 0 0.1 second, 0 0.3, 1.2, 5.0. So if an event comes in and it matches one of those buckets, it gets thrown into that bucket. And that's how it works, time series database. All right, so this is what we're gonna deploy. We're gonna deploy Docker Swarm. We're gonna have traffic up on top. We're gonna have Grafana and you can see it's the same stack as before, but traffic is now sending metrics back and forth to Prometheus and traffic is kind of organizing the entire stack here. So it's an organizing the front ends, it's organizing the domains, uh, the URLs I meant to say, and you know, also exposing metrics. So we're gonna take a look at this. What do you think? So we're gonna look at this quick demo and it's an observability metrics demo. And actually here's the GitHub link. Oh, oops, oops because this comes right from, let me get out of this. Ooh, got a little bit of inception going. Let me stop sharing my screen for a second and drop this into the chat so everybody can get that link. There's the traffic training link. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share another screen here. We have a couple of comments before I start the demo. Uh, oh, John, luc okay. All right, let me share my screen. I'm going to share my terminal now. Yes. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So yes. Cover the background there. Good. So you see my terminal. Actually, let me make it uh, light so everybody can see it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I have I'm gonna go to the project. Wait a second, Brian, because we cannot see it. Okay, now it's okay. You can you go. You see it again. Okay. It's okay. Yes. Okay, then I'm going to the directory since I change everything now. We're going to go into the observability section. So this is actually the Git repo. So you can see it's 06 observability. And then we have a bunch of Docker Compose files and traffic files in this directory. Let me clear it up so you can see it a bit better. Can you see everything, Sergio, OK? Yeah, if you can just, uh, for example, zoom, uh, increase the character by uh, one thing, it's OK. Yeah, this is perfect. Go with it. It's OK. okay. Perfect. Okay, so now you see, you know, I created different compose files. And each compose file is Dr. Myers compose dot whatever this compose file is trying to do. For example, the access log shows you how to enable access logging. And here's logging for traffic. And we're going to look at the metrics uh, Dr. Compose file and the traffic metrics YAML. So the traffic metrics YAML is the configuration for traffic itself. And the Docker Compose metrics is the configuration of the services. So let's look at the metrics first. Huh? So using your favorite uh, editor, Vim should be. Um, all right. So here is actually the file. And you can see, looks just like the screenshot we saw earlier. If I scroll down, you can see traffic logging is enabled in Prometheus metrics. So everything is enabled uh, just as advertised. Now let's quickly look at the Docker Compose file as well. We're using image 2.3, we're exposing ports. Here's Prometheus, and you can see down on the Prometheus side, if I scroll down here, um, I actually tell traffic use port 9090, use HTTP entry point web. The service name is Prometheus, and I want to give it this uh, URL name. So I want to give it this host name to use for Prometheus. And this is used for each service. So Prometheus.localhost, and you have Grafana.localhost. 
And I have some nice uh, demos down here as well. So we have Grafana. And Sergio probably knows this. Uh, the cat app about localhost is very famous for my yeah. courses. And you can see exactly what's going on. So that's the compose file. Let's just quickly start this up. And with Docker, it's quite easy. So Docker stack deploy. And minus C tells it what compose file we want to use. And then traffic is the name of the stack. So let's just start that up quickly. And then I need to find my browser here. Oops, it's creating, creating, creating. Okay, brilliant. Now, you still see my screen here? Yes. Prometheus.localhost. So now I can go to Prometheus.localhost. And there you go. I have my Prometheus server actually running. Let me make this bigger so people can see. And you can see my targets. So it's monitoring Prometheus, it's monitoring traffic. Um, if I go back to the graph, you know, I can actually see traffic service request total. So it's pulling metrics directly from traffic. And it does this all in one command, right? I've only deployed this stack, and then I have Prometheus, Grafana, everything running and monitoring each other. So that's the Prometheus side. I also have my demo app, catapp.localhost, and it's my random cat generator. Thank you to another Docker captain, Mike, that uh, created this. It's quite cool. So it's random cat generating, and you can see it's uh, changing the image, and it also tells you what container it's actually using to do this. And finally, we have this lovely thing called grafana.localhost. And there you go. So Grafana is running as well. So we can actually go in and see here's our dashboard. And it's a nice dashboard because we can see, OK, there's already one 404 error. Average response time is 3.1 seconds. You can see we're getting a lot of data just you know, from our little cat app we have here. Average response time, total requests. And this is all done automatically. So when we deploy this stack, it's deploying you know, Prometheus, Grafana, and it's also deploying the dashboard. It's deploying the, the data source. It's configuring everything for us. So it's very simple to use. So that's why I really encourage people to start monitoring, because it's so easy to get up and running. I mean, you don't have to be uh, messing around with this very long to have a full stack running. So that's actually my quick demo on getting Prometheus, Grafana, and everything up and running quickly. You can see there's three services, average response time, uh, 200s, 302s by protocol. So there's some interesting information that comes out of this as well. I'll show you one additional thing that I enabled here on the cat app. And that is if I do like this, I put a custom error page in there. You know, and Sergio knows this as, as well. It's like, uh, this is also part of the stack. In traffic, you can actually use you know, custom error pages that are global for all of your pages. So if you, for example, have 10 services running, you have the same 404 type of screen for all your services. Really quite nifty. But that is quickly how to stand up Prometheus Grafana, a complete monitoring stack with very little effort. As you saw, I mean, we had everything running within just one command. Now I'm gonna go back and start my presentation again. Are there questions so far on where we are with this? But uh, Brian, um, um, let me ask you, uh, it's so nice to see things going so smooth uh, in few comments and have all these big thing uh, Together because uh, you see, you know, I know you show few things, but it's a big thing behind there. So, uh, in your experience, uh, going back, what what happened with Google that was huge because every one of us uh, working with systems say, "Okay, Google is down. I I don't care of anything else. Uh, if they fail, uh, it means that every one of us it's allowed to fail in time." Yes. But on the other side, I want to, I, I'm curious because you may work with huge system or a bigger system than the normal. So in this period where the traffic is increasing so fast, how was an impact of such uh, observability 
feature when dealing with traffic in uh, real world scenarios. Uh, if you can uh, tell us if you find some uh, metrics that was more important or that gave you a more important overview when dealing with down or problems. How was your experience with, with that? I mean, from my experience, most customers, I mean, when we're, when we're looking at like outages, I would say most of them is disk-based, to be honest. It's really like, you know, too many images running, you know, on the build server, and the build server goes over, then you can't deploy production, you know, just like cascades into bigger errors. So it's really these small things you need to keep on an eye on. So like disk space, uh, also like networking and ensuring that you don't hit limits within your cloud provider. There's all these things you can monitor directly. Now, from our experience on monitoring, it's incredibly important to monitor, you know, what the user is expecting, right? So, and that's completely different from what we think. We think, hey, I want to monitor in case this service goes offline. But if that service goes offline and doesn't impact the user, it's not really as important. You see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. you really have to look at it from like, okay, your, your application, you can do everything and start shutting things off until it impacts the user. And that's when you should go, okay, we really need to monitor how this happens, right? We need to figure out the steps to where this actually occurs. And additionally, it's a, it's a learning process because every time you have an error or a bug or anything like this, you should be building alerts and metrics around this to ensure it doesn't happen again in the future. So that, that's a really key takeaway is like, we're constantly adjusting it. It's not like set and forget monitoring, it's really like adjust, 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 adjust. Right, right. And things keep on happening and sometimes you say, oh, it already happened to me. I, I did, I solved the last time and you go mad sometimes. So exactly. I, I mean, as, as you know, it's just, very common that uh, we, oops, I lost my screen here. Um, it's very common that we, we hit roadblocks. We run into weird situations. But the thing is, we need to learn from this and build it into our monitoring and continuous uh, updating our monitoring. Because you, what we do is put our monitoring system also into CI CD. So our dashboards, everything, all your scripts. So you're also continuously delivering your monitoring system. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> we're constantly redeploying the monitoring quite frequently just to keep pace with the errors we're seeing. All right. All right. So we virtually control our monitoring basically. All right. So we we you go home with your presentation. I yes, I will. I, I just have a couple more slides to go. Yes, um, yes, I will ask you something more at the end. And guys, if you have questions, we are, uh, Brian is all yours to answer at the end. I, I'm here for you. So, I mean, that was really the observability section. I really want to highlight some resources because, you know, this is directly taken from uh, the course. So a lot of the information is, you know, in the course. But the thing is, you really need to use the system. You need to deploy it and work with Prometheus and Grafana on a daily basis. And I always mention to people that uh, it's so easy to over build monitoring because it's so cool. You build all these dashboards and everything like this. And I always tell people, you know, the human mind can only track like eight things at a time, right? On a screen, only eight, yes. not 80, eight. <laughs> so when we build like a crazy dashboard, all these things, you want to try to limit it to the most important uh, metrics. Like, and and do you think that uh, I've seen we've seen before? Maybe it was a, a quickly that uh, I want to uh, I want to have the opportunity to share that. Um, it, as you said, there is a native support a native support for Prometheus in uh, traffic. So when you build up the Prometheus, there were some metrics from traffic already uh, available, and right. you show it up from the drop-down list. And uh, do you think that uh, they uh, succeed in giving uh, all the very important one when monitoring traffic and traffic uh, 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 the traffic uh, behavior? 
because um, I, I want to ask you, uh, if we put something like traffic, traffic in front of our infrastructure, the question is uh, yes, but then is uh, a single point of failure is appears. So uh, how, how much it impacts uh, with this dealing with monitoring, I think it's very impo important. How much we can uh, cope with traffic like our single point of failure while we can have uh, high availability or uh, how much uh, resources we expect it consumes respect to the whole infrastructure we are running. So that's a question that usually comes to my mind when I think uh, in putting traffic or any other proxy in front of my infrastructure because uh, there, there are downsides and I think that with this kind of metrics you can face them. I mean, you have to look at your infrastructure as a whole because I always like, uh, I like highlighting this because many people are like, oh, you know, the proxy is the, the bottleneck or the single point of failure. I'm like, well, you know, do you have a firewall that comes into this? Yeah, we have one firewall above that. I'm like, well, you also have a single point of failure there. <laughs> you know, so you need to look at the entry point to your infrastructure all the way down because many times people don't look at the single entry point to your infrastructure. And that's already the single point of failure. Now we get down to traffic and it's really a question of, you know, it's easy to deploy multiple traffics and have HA, either open source or enterprise, either one, super easy. The question is, uh, do you have the resources and does it make business sense to deploy it? Okay. From a technical point of view, I always recommend it. I always say, hey, if you can go HA, if it's cost, problem, then yeah, you're going to have to tell management, hey, we and highlight the fact that you have a single instance and that your SLA is tied to the single instance. All right. That, that's really the difference because, you know, I like being very transparent with, you know, management and whoever. And I say, you know, this is the infrastructure you have. These are the limitations. And that's what you should really know going into this. And it's their decision at the end of the day, hey, do you want to keep it or do you want to add additional yeah. services? And uh, in this moment, they always want, I mean, in Italy, the point is always saving money. So I'm I'm afraid they will go for, ah, oh, it's okay, we know. And then they will call you at the phone and say, but the ISTAS was, a, <laughs> there was an ad available. And you, you can just say, I hate to say, I told you so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like uh, the chaos monkey, right? In, in Switzerland, we have the chaos Heidi, you know, it's the Heidi, okay. the, the girl running through the mountains. Okay. Uh, unplugging servers. So you can also tell management, hey, we're going to do some chaos testing and see how the infrastructure holds up. And yeah, it, it highlights it quite quickly because you, you can kind of motivate the, the chaos testing to start there. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. So uh, uh, let me let me pass you one more question. Uh, this for it's from uh, the the Twitch chat, mm -hmm. and it's asking, how could you point, a, point out how traffic's default matrix are used by Grafana default diagram, so that you afterward could show what could be first custom diagram, as example you often use? Uh, it will, it will understand, ah, okay, it's already there. Okay, so, yep. so actually what happens is the default metrics in traffic or are just given raw to Prometheus. Right, so Prometheus gives them, and then Grafana takes these and actually doesn't do anything with them. So you have to tell Grafana to then build these dashboards. Now, what? Let me share my screen again. The dashboards included in my example are bootstrapped, which means they come automatically with uh, the traffic deployment. So when you start this demo, you get this this dashboard automatically. So you don't have to do any configuration. Now, if I want to add an additional panel, I can go here, add panel, and then you know start you going through my you metrics. Can, you can share your screen, Brian, because we cannot see it. Oh, you can't see. Oh, sorry. Maybe. It, yeah, let me run through this again. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Now it's perfect. All right. So discard. Let me back up. Yeah, like I mentioned, when you deploy this demo stack, actually, let me show you the source code quickly and how that works. Because uh, if you look in the default directory here, 
There we go. So in this example directory, we have a Grafana directory, Prometheus directory. If we go into the Grafana directory, there's actually a provisioning folder. And this provisioning folder is quite slick. It's something nicely that uh, Grafana has done about a year, two years ago. So provisioning, it has a dashboard and data sources directory. And I think there's also like some other ones now, but uh, if you go into dashboards, dashboards, you can see I have my default dashboard already highlighted here. So if you find something really cool uh, online, you just export it and you put it into this folder and you start Grafana again and it automatically deploys this dashboard with everything in. For example, I will give you an example. How about that? So let's go to Grafana. Dashboards, traffic dashboard. Okay. So here, and let's look at all dashboards and just type in traffic, right? Traffic. So we find, oh, let's just type traffic too, maybe. Anyway, I'll just pick a random one. Uh, Let's take this one. All right, so we take this random traffic dashboard. I just copy this ID right here, this 10906. I come back to my traffic dashboard and go to plus import, put the ID in there, load. I already am using it, so I have to call it something else, traffic to, to, to for example. And Prometheus, import override. There you go. And there you go. I just imported a new dashboard that's using all the metrics from traffic directly. I can also add a custom panel, right? I can go in here, uh, default, and then I can start saying traffic. And then it automatically pulls in all the metrics directly from Prometheus. So it's all pulled in by default. You see, I didn't have to do any configuring within Grafana yeah. to get these. So I just go here, and there you go. I have traffic config load requests, and it just populates automatically. So it no. is very simple to start building graphs and build things up with Grafana. You can have, right. like I said, once the, the Prometheus and Grafana are talking, you can start going crazy building dashboards and really uh, build some nice uh, dashboards quite quickly. But I, I have some great resources for you, all right, for one. Uh, you may have heard GitLab, um, Grafana, here, dashboards at gitlab.com. Uh, they don't trust me, huh? <laughs> yeah, they changed it. I can't get in there. Anyway, Grafana dashboards, GitLab. Anyway, I will find the list, GitLab, Grafana dashboards. I think they changed it, or they took it offline. Well, they used to have um, long-term dashboard, public Grafana. How about that one? There we go. Let's go in here and public Grafana. Ah, well, you can't get it anymore. Anyway, I have a list that I'll share with everyone afterwards, and it's a list of publicly available Grafana dashboards. And for example, CERN, you know, they have all their GitLab or all their Grafanas online. There's like a huge list of uh, Grafana dashboards you can grab from other people. And I highly recommend going out and like searching these dashboards and finding something nice and then saying, oh, I'm going to use that and modify it for me. So you don't have to start from zero is what I'm saying. You can go out and find examples on how they actually wrote the queries and understand it a bit more. So I, I do that quite often. I, I go look at a dashboard. I'm like, oh, wow, how do they build this? And I just download it and I, I copy it. So I think you perfectly answer the, the question. So uh, it's a very powerful tool. And uh, there, the Gianluca already shared the link in the chat. So it's, you can see it. Oh, nice. Because there's like Grafana public dashboards or something. And then there's all sorts of them. I mean, it's really, it's one of these blog posts that has a ton of them. Anyway. And Brian, I don't know if you're ready, if you're going to mention that, but also with the 
traffic pilot tool, this matrix uh, internal stuff becomes very, very useful. We have a complete uh, uh, toolkit uh, given for, let's say, for free by Traffic Labs. So it's a powerful uh, altogether stack. Absolutely. And it's very simple to configure. I mean, you essentially go into traffic and you give it an API key and instantly you have this new service built on top of your traffic dashboard. And it's looking for security vulnerabilities and it also allows you to use third party middlewares, which means you know people are, uh, the latest version of traffic allows for people to write custom middlewares. And now they have like a, a middleware hub, I guess. So people can actually download these and install them, which is quite cool. So this uh, pilot is helping with all these things. Yeah, so right. So uh, if, if you if, if you already guys uh, heard that, uh, uh, Brian is mentioning a lot of course because he's doing a lot of courses. And uh, the one uh, uh, on traffic, I had the opportunity to have it as a preview and it was uh, impressive. So. I think you will talk about a little bit now or a little bit later, but uh, it's something I, if since we're close to Christmas, think it uh, uh, to ask to, to Santa as a gift because <laughs> it's something not useful but also funny, complete, and you may find things that uh, I already know traffic proxy and uh, the other tools. But when I you when I had the wall course, I say okay, there's something really I didn't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I really took a long time. Wait, here's here. feedback. feedback. <laughs> Um, oh, thanks. So what, what I did is I really tried to understand traffic from every aspect. You know, I went through all the documentation. I read every documentation page. I read everything about it, start understanding the community. And then I start building the course around it. because, you know, as a DevOps engineer, I was recommending it to our customers, you know, use traffic for your installations. And many times our customers were like, hey, can you also, you know, give us a course on how it works? And it just kind of mutated into an online course now because of COVID, because I was doing these workshops on-prem and then everybody's like, yeah, you know, I really want this still. So I, I built an on my first online course. So please uh, be gentle with me. Um, but yes, I'm going to give it for 50% off to everyone in this particular session. And yeah, I will give you the link just after this. But yeah, so everyone's free to take the course 50% off. Uh, and I also have like a Visual Studio Code course as well. And if you ping me, I can give you a discount for that as well. <laughs> but let me show you some resources I have for traffic yeah. before we jump into yeah. the course. And guys, all the links you will see will be shared in the chat or we will share the slides of Brian later on. So don't be, don't be afraid of that. We, got, we will have everything. So let me share. Do you see my presentation again? Yes. Yes. OK. There are some great links here, and I can only recommend all of them. <laughs> so the first one is Awesome Traffic. If you don't know the Awesome Repos, uh, basically, the Awesome Repo is a collection of, for example, Awesome Docker, Awesome Kubernetes, Awesome CNCF. And it is a it's an open source list, so it's a Git repo. And essentially, what we do is try to track every project around that particular topic. Uh, the awesome Docker, I'm actually, uh, you know, helping out with this repo as well. And we have a few thousand different projects there. So everything from storage to networking to, you know, traffic to proxies, everything is there. And we actually try to keep it very fresh. So we go through to make sure the links are there. And we also indicate if it's a, a service you have to pay for or if it's open source. So we, we tell that also right in the repo. It's also you know getting started, documentation, all these things as well. Next up, I have a repo here, Monitor Traffic of Prometheus. It's actually what we just uh, did here, but it's you know kind of explains it step by step exactly how to deploy a monitoring stack with traffic. The traffic community, I can only recommend. There's a great community out there. They're very quick in responding to questions or you know issues. 
And finally, the Traffic Labs YouTube. I can also recommend that. There's some great stuff. CERN was on there not so long ago, and that's just mind-boggling what they're doing. You know, the, the scale at what they're doing is just really impressive. You think you're, you know, a couple hundred servers are really cool until they spin up a thousand for a demo. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's it's different world. And then finally, the traffic documentation, very good. You just really have to read through it and understand how to uh, find what you're looking for. Other than that, uh, yeah, like I said, what's next? The complete traffic training course. Uh, it's here. And Sergio will have the link and the discount code, but the byte, the IO for slash traffic training. And again, it's a 50% discount. So hey, copy the discount, share with your friends, um, share with your community, please. And yeah, that's that's all for this particular session. Connect with me, reach out to me, send me emails. I always like responding to emails. And so guys, uh, it's a pleasure to have you, Brian, here. And I want to thank you for your time and for your presentation. And I keep on really remind you about you uh, enjoy the possibility of the course discount because it's valuable. And uh, uh, I, can, I cannot say anything else uh, besides then uh, uh, saying thank you to everybody that joined this session, but the whole session is the third episode, the finals of this traffic automation. I think it's a great success. It. Uh, I would like to have Brian here in Torino as soon as possible. But absolutely. You know, <laughs> right now we have to. We you can cross the Alps, uh, me neither. So oh. we have to stick with that. And uh, I hope that Gianluca will come on the stage to say everybody, to say hi everybody before going. All right, and look at him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm here, Gianluca. And of course, we can't hear you. <laughs> no. There is this, this, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, Guys, it's a joke of Gianluca always wishing Mike, and when he comes, it's on the wrong mic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's OK. But if anyone has questions, I mean, you can ask now or, you know, to yes, the community. Yes, we, we, we're here, guys. Yeah. Yeah. But Gianluca, sooner or later, will be of us. Otherwise, we will use some. Uh, I, I, I will translate uh, for you <laughs> what he <laughs> say. It, it will be our muted. Oh, nice. But I, I can I can take the opportunity to say thank you to Gianluca and to Equinix Metal, which uh, gave us some space to for demos. I want to thank you, Brian. I want to thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, three hours broken. Yeah, we we we're, we completed it. We have Google, Spotify. You know they they should be monitoring it, right? They didn't monitor yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They missed some monitor. Or otherwise, they have some eigenvalue okay. on traffic. I think All right. I I think I mute myself now. <laughs> but okay. I'm doing some. I mean, thank you for coming, Brian. But I have to say that. From this side, like trying to managing all the actions, I don't know if it's my network or StreamYard, but everything is delayed like five seconds. So I'm kind of rushing, trying to figure out is the screen really shared or is the uh, voice really coming? But I, everything looks good other than my microphone. So I think that we we made a good event. So thank you for for everything. Yes, and uh, let me thank you, Traffic Labs, for making this possible, and uh, Patricia Dugan, who organized the community, and uh, Brian knows her very well and involved him too. And uh, we hope, uh, Patricia, we hope you a carbonara. We will do you as soon as, as soon as possible, but please promise us no more pineapple on pizza, <laughs> on pizza okay? <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, okay, I, also, I, also, I also want to thank you, Traffic Lab, because today I got my present from the, the company. So it's the nice. first time I got like a, a, a traffic T-shirt. So I, I can wait to her to to wear them. Oh, cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, today was uh, traffic. I think the traffic sent things to Italy because I received it, uh, that today. Oh, too. nice. So, Congrats. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's uh, it's uh, Christmas time, and guys, we go for Christmas. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas to CNCF Meetup, and uh, really, uh, we will make something amazing for 2021. I hope we can meet in person sooner or later, but I don't want to make any you know any bet on that because uh, I, I can only make mistakes. So. <laughs> I wish you Merry Christmas and uh, a better time next time. I don't know, but we have a, we have had great streaming events. Thank you to you, Brian, to John Luca, and to Traffic Labs. So it's a pleasure. Yeah, thank so you. Have a, Thanks for having me. Have a good evening and thank you. Ciao. Bye, guys.